The 1975 Temple University football season would kick off a special year for the Owls and the city of Philadelphia. As Temple strives for continual improvement of its programs, Coach Wayne Harden appreciates the close relationship between the university and the city and observes... We feel very fortunate to be in the fourth largest city in the United States, especially during the bicentennial year. It all started here 200 years ago, and the fact that we have so many things to offer in the city of Philadelphia, and we feel very fortunate that Temple University is located in the city. The university in itself offers the finest in education, facilities, and opportunities for the future. We play our games at Veterans Stadium at the present time. The students can get on the subway and in 10 minutes empty out right at our stadium. This was to be a season of ups and downs. A true test of each player's desire to excel and what it would take to accomplish their goal. They would become a close-knit, successful team because they would meet the challenge. The opener with nationally ranked Penn State renewed a series of intense rivalry before 57,000 plus fans at Franklin Field. Standout lineman Joe Klecko recalls. Playing Penn State was a big thing in my life. I really liked it. I was looking forward to it. It was an easy game, I guess you say, to get up for. It. The Owls quickly showed the Lions that they were not only up and ready to play, but ready to win. This stunning 76-yard touchdown on the season's first handoff is well remembered by Coach Harden. Bobby Harris just read the blocking beautifully, and once he got in the open, he showed his speed and took it into the end zone. And a great way to start a season and a great way to start a game. Then it was the defense's turn as number 93, Joe Teklitz, led a charge that convinced Penn State they were indeed in for a tough game. After Doug Brown picked off this state pass, sophomore quarterback Pat Carey proceeded to have one of the finest debuts of any Temple signal caller ever. His thoughts of going up against the mighty Nittany Lions are still fresh in his mind. Well, the feeling I had going into the Penn State game was, uh, was a game that we could really see how good we were and how much Temple's program has improved, you know, and advanced in the last couple of years. And I think that, you know, everybody in our team is looking forward to it and they, they had, re you know, built up slowly to a peak, you know, going into that game. It was a game where we just were loose, relaxed, and if we won, it would have been a great upset. If we lost, we were expected to. But winning, not losing, was clearly on Temple's mind. State had scored its only touchdown on a kickoff return. Typical of the Owls' defensive play, this Andrus pass was nearly picked off as Temple stymied another lion drive. At the half, Temple held a 13-12 advantage. The hard hitting continued as the Owl defense gave up yardage only grudgingly. Down 18-16 in the last period, the Owls began a late comeback drive. While this pass was incomplete, Pat Carey would total over 200 passing yards for the game. He later said this. I think Coach Harden prepared for the game so well that all I did was kind of act like a robot, more or less, on the field. You know, he had programmed my head so well that everything he'd said was going to happen, happened. The line did a great job, and then the receivers were getting open the whole game. It was nothing outstanding I did. It's just the team played like we should have played all year, really. Co-captain Pete Riggie's catch set up Anthony Anderson's first collegiate touchdown. While only a freshman, Anderson showed the moves of a seasoned veteran as he fought his way into the end zone from the six. With Temple out in front 23 to 18, their dreams of an upset had become a very real possibility. The Owls were flying high as they realized their position, but their hopes were soon shattered as Penn State scored after the 66-yard punt return and escaped with a narrow 26 to 25 victory. But Temple had rushed for more yards and scored more points on Penn State than any other Lion opponent would the rest of the year including Ohio State and Sugar Bowl victor, Alabama. Later, Coach Harden summed up the game this way. When we think about the Penn State game, we think about a great effort, the great crowd, nostalgia of being the opening event for the bicentennial. It was just a super night. The only thing wrong is we came up one point short. I don't think 
Anyone that came to the game went away with anything but great thoughts about both ball clubs. I know that everyone on our team, our staff, our administration, and the entire city will always remember. After downing West Virginia the last two years, today's game would be a different story. The Mountaineers showed a well-balanced attack that would eventually beat North Carolina State in the Peach Bowl as the Owls suffered their second setback. Meeting Boston College at home, Temple found out why the Eagles had performed so well against Notre Dame the week before. While there were several outstanding individual Owl performances, the team as a whole was yet to put it together as Boston College, a team that would give Texas a good contest later in the season, down the Owls. The Cincinnati Bearcats brought an unblemished 3-0 record into the vet. The Owls knew this was a must game. On their first offensive series, Temple drove 75 yards and 13 plays to demonstrate they could mount a sustained drive. Quarterback Carey calls on two of his former high school teammates, Jeff Stemple, who makes a super catch. Then on senior fullback Tom Duff, as Temple takes a quick 7-0 advantage. Early in the second quarter, Carey ducked a rush to complete this 40-yarder to a lunging Larry Richard. Carey then went to Stemple again. Next play capped their second 75-yard scoring drive as Bob Harris carried it in. Despite defensive plays like this, Cincinnati began to come back. Coming to life in the third quarter, the Bearcats offense showed why they were undefeated as they forged ahead on this touchdown run 17-14. Midway through the fourth quarter, Temple took over the ball on their own 20. It was now or never. With the success of the entire year on the line, the Owls started the key drive of their season. Coach Harden knew his array of local talent could do the job, and the offensive unit rose to the challenge. Bearing his calls, Carey moved his club steadily down the field. Here, behind perfect pass protection, he found Stemple. On the next play, he kept on the option and picked up 13 yards to the Cincinnati 12. The Owls were knocking at the door. With the clock running out, Tom Duff carried four straight times. This one good for five yards. Duff's final plunge caps this do-or-die 80-yard comeback. After this drive was complete, the team felt like they had put it together offensively. We were getting closer to a team. We weren't quite there yet, but it was soon to come. I think this was the first part. Losses to Pittsburgh and Akron really hurt. Pitt, who would later down powerful Kansas in the Sun Bowl, was led by Heisman Trophy candidate Tony Dorsey. If the Owls didn't have a winning season, entrance to Temple's honored Triple T Club would be an impossibility. A player had to let her and be on a winning football team three years in a row to qualify. That meant winning the rest of their games. When a team is one in five, with five games left, you really have to reach down and grab and come up with something more than just winning. And I think our team really got together at this point in time. We wanted to drive for five, to have a winning season, and we also wanted a great effort against Delaware. A great effort is what Coach Harden got. With the game only four minutes old, Carey ended a 53-yard drive with this keeper. The defense got the ball right back when an intimidating Ken Bekelja not only broke up this pitch out, but came up with a loose ball too. This scoring play demonstrates the importance of the offensive line. Number 51, center Mark Brissani, next year's captain and 65, Pat Staub, throw perfect blocks. Carey reads the defensive end and hands off to Duff as number 70, Jim Cooper and Jeff Stemple wall off the defense. The Blue Hens tried again, but with no better success as number 93, Joe Teklitz created and recovered this fumble. 
Duff again got the call and scored his second touchdown in the space of 17 seconds. Behind the defense's great play, the Owls had staggered Delaware for 21 points in just six and a half minutes. The defense preserved their shutout by recovering yet another fumble at their own one. But the play of the game was Tom Duff's 78-yard TD. That was really an exciting experience because I wasn't supposed to break the big one. So I went through the hole and uh, started on the run. And I saw the linebacker coming over. I went for the corner and just started to run and run and run. And next thing I knew, I was in the end zone. Teammate Pat Carey felt there was more to it. You know, people said that he was too slow and things, but it just shows what a heart can do. Tom believed in himself, and when he got the chance, he did it. Believing in yourself, this was one of the lessons the Owls had to learn. They had experienced the disappointment of coming close only to lose, but they had learned from their defeats too. They realized the game had to be played from the heart, and they had to pull together and work harder. With a Bob Baker to Rocco Luciano pass ending the scoring, Temple had amazingly held Delaware to no rushing first downs while recording its first shutout of the year, 45 to nothing. The Dayton Flyers were next in line. With a great victory behind them, the Owls were gathering momentum. Tom Duff would have the best day of his career, gaining 183 yards. His comment reflects the team's attitude. It was nice to see everybody pull together. I think we had a lot closer team because everybody had to do their job. They had to do their job. The price was hard work, determination, and self-discipline. Of course, a few good bounces didn't hurt either. Closing in on nearly every Temple kicking standard, Don Bitterlich hit this 30-yarder. Sometimes the camera catches what the eye misses, as this play shows. Tecklitz and Klecko buried the Dayton quarterback, and the ball popped right into the hands of Blair Myers, who balled it into the end zone. But the official had thought the ball had hit the ground and ruled it an incomplete pass. Breaks usually even out, and in the next series, Daly tossed the ball right in Myers' hands. It wasn't so easy this time, though. Blair had to run. And run. And run before he was finally brought down from behind. It was a happy but tired lineman that was helped to his feet. Three plays later, Carey went over from the one to boost the Temple lead to 17 to 7. The Owls would rush for over 300 yards on this day. Kevin Grady had 13 of his 75 on this play. Adding to the lead, Bitterlick was unceremoniously dumped after this three-pointer. Number 34, senior co-captain Pete Riggi was hampered by injuries throughout the season, but his leadership and dedication were outstanding. An example of Bitterlick's powerful range, Don made this 53-yard attempt with an easy 10 yards to spare. The defense collared the Flyers again and again as the Owls went on to win 23-10 and wrap up their second straight. Without a doubt, we were disappointed going into the second half of the season, but we were hanging together as a defense and an offense and as a team. We had a win them to make a winning season. They kept hanging with the Triple T for, and it was a big thing for a lot of guys on the team. Joe Klecko's words and Jeff Stemple's catch demonstrated the feeling of the whole team, and their performance against the Rhode Island Rams proved it. Freshman flanker Steve Watson's 49-yard TD. Sophomore defensive back, Bob Sala's interception. These plays and others showed a Temple Owl team with a purpose to drive for five and close out the season on a winning note. But how about this play? Textbook perfect. A 48-yard pass from Carey to Ken Williams taken on the dead run and turned into a 78-yard touchdown. Defensive end Joe Geis' interception set up another Bitterlick field goal attempt. Tom Duff comments on the fellow senior. Donnie was so consistent that we took him for granted. He would come into the game and we'd say, oh, well, we're going to kick another field goal. We're only going to get three points. But at the end of the season, you realize every time he came in, we were going to get three points. The offense soon cashed in on the defense's work as Anthony Anderson took the low road to the end zone.
Number 56 freshman Sam Skelding picked off this deflected overthrow to set up Temple's fifth touchdown of the day. Senior halfback Kevin Grady then took a pitch and behind great blocking went in untouched. The day when freshman performers stood out, Ron Harris, Temple's answer to Terry Metcalf, became the third frosh to score to cap a 45-6 route of the Rams. Welcomed by the Temple Diamond Band under Jim Herbert, the Drake Bulldogs came to the vet. The Owl defense continued their hard-hitting tactics. Here, Joe Geis recovered the Bulldog fumble. Tom Duff picked up 19 on a burst up the middle. Pat Carey scored on this keeper to set the stage for Bitterlick's NCAA record-setting point-after touchdown attempt. True as always, Don split the uprights for his 78th consecutive extra point. His record-breaking achievements by season's end would include six NCAA and 11 Temple kicking standards. Named to several All-East and All-American teams, he would be selected to appear in the first annual Japan Bowl and the Hula Bowl, where he would set yet two more individual marks. Quite a career. Joe Klecko's hard rush was rewarded with this sack and a near fumble recovery. And even though he didn't want to, he had to give the ball back. Pat Carey displayed his cool control and poise here as he ducked the pressure and hit his favorite target, Jeff Stemple. Anthony Anderson cut through a big hole to go in for a 20 to nothing Temple advantage. The defense and the offense had joined together through the course of the second half of the season. And anchored in many key areas by underclassmen, they were looking forward to the accomplishment of their mid-season goal. Temple's sixth straight winning season under coach Wayne Harden. Their 44-7 trouncing of Drake put them very close. Thanksgiving Day at the vet was damp and dark. The hopes of the Owls were bright, though, as they prepared to clear this final wildcat hurdle. Good teams make their own breaks, and Temple's first one came when Ken Bakelja blocked this Villanova punt. Bitterlick hits another. His 21 field goals for the season sets a new NCAA record. Though so Captain Bob Mizia stops this play dead. Number 72, Junior Joe Klecko showed why he was all East and a preseason All-America candidate. Tom Duff gained 15 straight up the middle. Jeff Stemple then made another great catch look routine to put Temple up 10 to nothing. This play showed what practice and desire can accomplish. Coach Harden remembers. We thought we could return a punt. We didn't really know that it wouldn't be what we had worked on, but this was one that just worked out. Bobby Mizia had told his mother he was going to score a touchdown for her. He didn't know how and neither did we. And it wasn't the punt return that we worked on all week, but it was one that turned out to be six points. Mizia typically discounts his own role in his description. Everybody was blocking, throwing great blocks. Yelling to me where to run, cut back, wait up, you know. That was a team effort, I'd say, right there, that play. A team effort highlighted by an outstanding team leader. Downing Villanova 41-3, the Owls' drive for five was rewarded. Pat Carey best sums up the team attitude as they had successfully paid the price of victory back at midseason and continued Temple's winning tradition. Speaking from a team point of view, I think it was a time that everybody kind of looked inside themselves to see really what they were made of, see if they were winners, and to look and see how much effort they were putting out, you know, where they were making mistakes, not it was the guy next year's fault or something like that. It was a time where um, just kind of looked at each other and pulled together and decided we've wasted enough time, made enough mistakes, and start playing like we know we can play, you know, and have it carry on till 76. Carry on to 76. That's the goal of the 1976 Temple Owl team. That is Temple football. Temple football is working together, trying to build something at Temple. 
I'd never lived in the city and I thought it would be a good experience. It's close enough to home that my parents could come down and see a lot of the games. I like the area and it's just a real good school. We had good football and the program was on the upgrade and I wanted to be part of that. And I think that's what's really been the great thing about being here at Temple for the past six years are the kids that we've had. They're outstanding young men and I think that the direction that they're going in forming their Triple T Club will form a tradition of a success that will blend into a great future for everyone that's been associated with it. The 1976 football season for Temple University started here at Cherry Hill Inn, the preseason training camp. This is where the nucleus of a successful football program is born. The Temple coaching staff separates the fibers, searching for the heart of this new team. It will start to come together only after days of running, twisting, hitting, and sweating. where it begins. And this is where Temple football comes alive. Wayne Harden has always been an exciting, wide-open happening. Pro scouts state that a Harden coach team is a constant threat due to a well-conceived, dangerous, and unpredictable passing attack. A passing attack that can seek out and exploit the weak points in an opponent's defense. Temple quarterbacks make things happen. During the seven years of the Wayne Harden era at Temple, Owl quarterbacks have led the nation in pass completion percentage, topped college football in total offense, and won the coveted Maxwell Trophy. Plus, with gifted receivers like sophomore Steve Watson and seniors Joe Dugan and Ken Williams, number 86, Temple quarterbacks ignite an aerial attack that is always probing, striking, flooding the enemy secondary with big plays. The old bromide three yards in a cloud of dust can never be applied to Temple football. The owl running attack is designed to complement and help create opportunities for the passing game. But in no way does it take a back seat. Under Wayne Harden, Temple has produced its first two runners ever to gain a thousand yards a season. In 1976, sophomore Anthony Anderson, number 25, showed signs of joining Temple's all-time greats as he finished among the top 10 all-purpose runners in college football, just as dangerous on kickoff and punt returns as he was running from scrimmage.
Anderson, senior Bob Harris, number 32, freshman Wiley Pitts, Mark Bright, and George Benson averaged nearly five yards per carry over the course of the season. The Owl Runners were quick, fast, and always exciting. Wayne Harden believes that a perfect offensive game for the Owls is a balanced attack. 200 yards passing, 200 yards rushing, and 40 points on the scoreboard. Buried and explosive, the Owl offense was at its best against Grambling. Grambling, the national black collegiate champions in 1974 and 75. Grambling, the nation's most prolific producer of NFL talent made its first visit to Philadelphia. And here's that productive Temple offense at work. Speedster Bob Harris weaving through Grambling on the longest Temple run of the season, 70 exciting yards. Several plays later, the Owls unleash their longest pass play of the season. Quarterback Pat Carey to Ken Williams, giving the crowd what they were looking for, the bomb. It covered 62 yards, and the Owls' offense stung Grambling off it. It was a day for the big play, and defensive giant Joe Klecko was not to be outdone. Number 72 blocked the punt, and Temple's Sam Skelding took it in for the score. defense turned over big plays, the potent Grambling offense could not be held totally in check. Several picture-perfect passes to wide receiver Carlos Pennywell kept the outcome of the game constantly in doubt. Pennywell is the mirror image of Sammy White, NFL Rookie of the Year with the Minnesota Vikings, who was a 1975 graduate of Grambling. fourth quarter, the Owls were scrambling for their life. Junior safety Chuck Gill came up with a game-saving block of a sure TD pass. Junior defensive tackle Bob Burrell rocked a grambling runner, and number 55 sophomore linebacker Sam Sikosius was there to recover the fumble. The Owls quickly capitalized on the turnover as Bob Harris bowled his way downfield into field goal range. Wes Sorniski was called on to bring the Owls to within six. The defense stiffened and Carey was given the ball one last time. With 50 seconds to play, Bob Harris gained 13. Carey drove the Owls 35 yards in seven plays. And with 39 seconds left, the junior quarterback looked for leading receiver Ken Williams in the end zone. With an almost unbelievable comeback, the Owls had defeated the big and talented Grambling Tigers in a typical Temple football game. The Owls face a most difficult task in the then second-ranked Pitt Panthers, led by eventual Heisman Trophy winner Tony Dorsett. Once again, number 72, Joe Klecko, appeared leading the Temple defense. With some solid linebacking help from number 38, Rich Doyak, the Panther ground attack was stalled. Pitt was forced into a fourth and long situation and must punt. Freshman linebacker number 48, Bruce Gordon, charged in and blocked the punt. It's picked up by Chuck Gill and the Owls have struck first. The Pitt home crowd is shocked as the Owls go seven points up over the vaunted Panthers. Temple defense continued to dominate as Blair Myers sacked Pitt quarterback Mac Cavanaugh and Rich Doyak recovered one of four Pitt fumbles on this afternoon. Temple stormed off the field at halftime with the lead against the team that was to become national champions. The Panthers rallied to win, but in doing so, they were held to their lowest point total of the year, 21. Heisman Trophy winner, four-time All-American Tony Dorsett, was held to his lowest rushing output for the entire season. The Owls had thrown a major scare into the Johnny Majors-led Panthers.
Something old was tried at Temple this year, something that most scoffed at and said, don't waste your time, no one will show up. That something was a pep rally, and it proved the skeptics 100% wrong. Coach Wayne Harden spearheaded the efforts on behalf of the rally. The loyalists, cheerleaders, students, band, football team, faculty, and the administration all became a part of this effort. 3,000 people showed up at McGonagall Hall to cheer on the Owls, led by yours truly, Harry Callis. Some people who had not cheered for anything in years were caught up in the enthusiasm and emotion. People became involved, and everyone had a good time. During the year, 15 of 22 starters missed one or more games with injuries. Out of this adversity, a valuable lesson was learned by the young freshmen and sophomores. Following the leadership of team captain and center Mark Brissani, the Owls turned a physical challenge into a victory at Drake. Quarterback Terry Gregory, behind super protection from the likes of honorable mention All-American Pat Staub, patiently found Mike Hover over the middle and Temple matched an early Drake score. The Owls struck again moments later when Anthony Anderson was given a gaping hole on the right side and took it in. Temple decided to put this game to bed early. A leaping pass interception by Ken Bakelja set up another big offensive play. The Owls picked on the right side again, and it was Bob Harris' turn to score. The men in cherry and white soundly thrashed the Bulldogs 31-7. Vivid in the minds of Temple's young owls will be the day they shocked the mighty Penn State Nittany Lions at the bet. Underdogs by as much as four TDs against the powerful Lions, the owls excited their largest homecoming crowd ever as they literally took it down to the final second and beyond. After each team scored, Temple's Rich McCoy picked off a Penn State pass. On the very next play, junior quarterback Terry Gregory threw the bomb to Ken Williams, who beat his man and Temple went up 14 to 7. Temple's defense made the Lions pay for every yard. In spite of a determined and tenacious owl defense, Penn State powered ahead by a pair of touchdowns. The stage was set for Terry Gregory and his performance won him the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference Back of the Week Award as he passed for 290 yards. Late in the game, Gregory found Ken Williams and State's lead was narrowed to a touchdown. The defense forced Penn State to turn the ball over and Gregory went back to work. He hit Anthony Anderson good for 26 yards. State, expecting a pass, was fooled with a draw to number 33, Wiley Pitts, who picked up 17 yards. Gregory sent Williams on a deep post and attempted to go for broke. The pass was high, but Williams was interfered with. 42,000 screaming fans saw Temple score, and the decision was made to go for two points to win rather than tie. A decision that many might not have made, but the Owls came to win, not tie. With no time left and just one play, Gregory rolled right and threw just off the fingertips of Ken Williams. On this day, only the length of the football separated the highly favored Lions from the determined and courageous Owls. For the second year in a row, the Owls had been nosed out by one point against the nationally ranked Lions. And for the second straight year, Temple had scored more points against Penn State than any other opponent. A trademark of Temple football is a defense that plays with intensity and desire as epitomized by freshman Brian Brumell's clutch interception. 
Temple players are taught to go for the ball, whether it be a theft, a fumble, an open field tackle, a quarterback sack, or a block kick. The ball is the focal point of all action. Where the ball goes eventually decides all football games. Alertness and concentration are key factors in the outcome of each game. Joe Klecko, number 72, personified Temple's defense in 1976. First team All-East, honorable mention All-America. Klecko played with reckless determination. He was the heart of the Owl defense. In 1976, Temple played its most difficult schedule in its history. The Owls had faced the national champions, two major bowl teams, two Division II national playoff teams, and the best teams the East had to offer. The Owls under coach Wayne Harden had come a long way, and all the ingredients that go into a successful football program will be severely tested in 1977 as the Owls face opponents that had combined records of 76 wins, 34 losses, and three ties. As we have seen, Temple football is intensity, emotion. It is the will to win, dedication, the desire to excel. It is Wes Sorniski helping to set an all-time NCAA national kicking record of 106 consecutive extra points. It is Anthony Anderson among the top ten in all-purpose rushing. It is Joe Klecko and Pat Staub making first-team All-East an honorable mention All-American. It is sacrifice and togetherness. It is turning adversity into a learning experience. And most of all, it is exciting football filled with action. Temple football.